Oh, wouldn't the marine armor be good for Mar? You're right. I forgot we had that spare. Proceed to the mausoleum interior. There we go. Get some extra defense. Yeah, boo. Why can't Mar wear a gown? It would have been kind of interesting if Mar, like, slowly became uh, more, like, proper monster girl-ish. But I feel like that would be maybe a bit too fetishis fetishistic in a bad way. What are we fighting in here? Oh, Creepy Harpy. Creepy Harpy, weak to wind. Possibly also dark? No. Ooh, ow. Not ow, actually. That's barely any damage. Fight god. False god? Dead god? I don't know. I... I really want to compile... A, like, video essay list thing on that trope. You catch sight of figures you are pretty sure are Ivory Order disciples standing at the door to the mausoleum. Let us through, you say, but something isn't right. Trespassers will be disposed of on orders of Master Sherwin. Kill, they murmur dispassionately, and then attack. I was gone. Did Wander get the sword? Yep, I got the sword. I got the gown. I got the... Uh, the legendary armor for Riddus. We already found the bow. Ooh. Hey, Tanky. Treat all everybody's attack. Good to know. So where's the queen? Uh, not in this location. Wow. Should I do a lot of damage? Also, they're fast. Okay, I'm just gonna try Blade her down. See if I can just delete her from existence. Yeah, I'll bite. That's a really good move. Does Wander have card 10? No, I don't. That's the one card I don't have yet. Sarah. Good oh. damage. More good damage. Not so good damage, but that's fine because we have destruction. So he's at 79. Oh! Evil red eyes. How much that damage lucky. is that? 79 down to 15. 64 damage. That's pretty good. Everyone is now cursed. What does curse do? Take damage whenever they attempt to recover their HP is made. Oh, that's what curse does. Woo! That's spooky, actually. Uh, let's see, do you already beat the game? Was it fun? Huge Yoko Taro fan. So, I think if you're expecting something that is, like, closer to near, I think this isn't quite that. It's super solid, and I'm enjoying this thoroughly, but it's not quite like, uh, near levels. However, for a very solid traditional JRPG with the Yoko Taro flair, perfect. This game is great. Ooh, those are some good levels, too. It seems the Ivory Order disciples have come back to themselves. Their faces are blank. Apparently, they don't recall anything after Sherwin ordered them to guard the door. Could he have hypnotized them? The Ivory Order disciples are gone. How's the music? Amazing? Pretty good. I... Nothing quite as impactful as a lot of the near music was. 
but I can't demand that. Okay. So need 10th card for the best ending. Uh, not needed for the good ending. I thought the 10th card shows up specifically in here, though. Oh, that's a freaky looking something or other. Oh, it's like a hellhound. Well, that's problematic. Eh, it's not a big, big problem. This thing isn't that tanky. So I can just kill it. Oh, that's a freaky looking creature. It's a hellhound, but for light. But yeah, I, I'm going to fully explore this place, so I shouldn't have to worry too much about missing out on anything. You shall not pass. Die. Heaven Hound. Yeah, I guess, I guess that is. I really like the trope, by the way, of, like, the final area is not this, like, dark, corrupted area, but almost this, like, creepily pure zone instead. Let's do this. That's going to be some good, good damage. We might want to... We might want to actually give Deckard... Uh, specifically some extra speed. So he, he can generally go first before most of these random enemies. Uh, no, it's going to hit me again. But yeah, I'm trying to think of a good example. Tales of Symphonia is probably the one that I can think of uh, from when I was younger. Where you get to the end and it's all this like high-tech, angelic, magitech stuff. And it's really cool. It, to some lesser degree, Diablo? Kind of, sort of? Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, his speed is only 14. Let's see if I can bump that up. Because I don't think we need the fire stay ring that bad. Oh, there's the numb stay ring. However... I want to say the wind ring. The wind stay ring. There we go. The wind stay ring gives me some defense against an element and speed. Because our damage is pretty good. And not being not being chipped down by random enemies should help. Hopefully. So who's the most busted character in the party? Um, at the moment, probably the uh the protagonist. At least as far as I'm concerned. His his triple hit is pretty dang good. Let's do this. Hmm. Good hit. That was lucky. Not enough. I could do a spinning ray, but they're probably gonna resist it. I've heard the difficulty of this game is disappointing. Thoughts? Um eh. This is not a hard JRPG. But I don't know. I think it really depends on kind of what you're up against. Or what you're looking for. And what you're used to. Because from my perspective, like, I don't know. Uh, I've played a lot of JRPGs. Many of them are brain dead easy. Especially if you do any amount of side content ever. This doesn't really have enough. Uh, but I find as long as you're not playing... Um, playing silly, you know, just like no healers or something like that, you should be able to mo mostly just body your way through the game. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, a good example. Because, like... You sense something strange about this place. You can hardly make out your surroundings in the dim. You'd best watch your step. Hey, we don't even need a torch here. Ouch. Oops. The floor's covered in spikes. Ouch. 
Looks like a trap meant to deter trespassers. Okay, so don't just walk onto those like a fool. Fair enough. Well, do we pop eulogy now? Or do we try and kill... Alternatively, if I do spinning ray... Okay, it doesn't quite kill the Hound, but it does wreck her. Hound is not... Hound's just gonna attack. And does, like, nothing. I'm gonna pass. And we're gonna go for the Eulogy instead. Because I could use the healing. But for a second, I thought you were gonna need a torch for the second time in the game. Any tear-jerker moments in the story? Um... Kind of depends on your perspective on that. Yes and no. I mean, there are a couple of twists that I would definitely say are like... Actually, yeah. I, I think there are some twists that actually justify themselves a little bit. Honestly, I've cried more for the from laughter playing this game. The, uh, what is it? Chapter 4 is hilarious. But yeah, the hero in Mars backstory was actually pretty decent. As short as it was, but I mean, that's universally generally true. This, this game does not dwell. Linger? Doesn't linger. Bye. But no, I, honestly, if you're trying to suss out if whether or not this game is, like, worth picking up, I very much think it is. Uh, I, I think it is a very solid JRPG. It's not going to be revolutionary. Was lucky. However, uh, this kind of is... This is kind of what I wanted I Am Setsuna to be, if that makes sense. Where it's kind of a return to form for a more traditional uh, style of JRPG. Excellent. Um, with a different style and kind of, like, a, a different thought process behind it. Um, but this actually has a story I care more about, and characters that I care more about. Like, I am a Setsuna, the characters were kind of forgettable. And depressing? It didn't help that the main character was effectively no one. Um. No one in such a way that, like, you just never had any connection to them or, like, what their goals were. Whereas for this one, every character has kind of had their moments in a way that was charming and interesting. Nothing amazing or, like, yeah, groundbreaking, like I said. Oh, gosh, that skeleton has, like, a weird, creepy girl behind it. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Okay, do we do spinning ray? Yeah, let's do spinning ray. Let's see if I can go for a uh, double A. Week. Why did I pass? I should have just attacked. I'm a dang fool. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Cause yeah, we can just we can just roundhouse. There we go. Hell yeah, Mar. And once we get Mar there, their big big weapon, we should be able to actually punch through a lot of these enemies pretty quick. Cause main character with his legendary weapon does slightly more than Mar does. Admittedly has the better moves, but I'm talking base value. And fight. Okay. So we know these guys are really resistant, so I'm just going to probably go for the kill on one of them. Or neither of them. They usually try and seal my moves more than anything else. Do I die? That is a really good move. And he just does one damage to the hero. I love it. Oop. Damn, Mar. It's like a truck. Riddus is level 27? 
I think that was 27th. Yeah, Cure's target of seal. I'll take it. Okay, so what do we got back here? Anything of any value? Yes. Treasure. Another unsealer. I mean, I guess I'll take it. Because Yoriko Taro's name on it. Never been into JRPGs before him. Interesting. Um, I think you'll have probably a fine time with this. It's very... Gain a gem. Oh, hey. That works out in my favor. Let's try doing a poison arrow on this guy. This is a very paint-by-numbers JRPG as far as its base mechanics go. It doesn't do anything terribly special. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it does anything wrong either. But I think you will enjoy it, especially because, like I said, it doesn't have to say it's welcome, or like I've said m multiple times over the course of this, uh, me playing through this, that I'm on like hour 12 of this and I'm at the end, but I don't feel like it needed to be longer than it was. It's It told the story that it ne needed to and it didn't waste time doing it. I would have loved to know more about the characters. Like, we still don't actually know much about the witch that we're with and how the dragon, uh, how the dragon uh, caused her to go on this, this quest of vengeance. Because that seems like it would have actually been kind of a nice de detail. And I bet we actually get the answer here, maybe. Okay. If I do poison arrow on the dog, because we're going to do... We're going to do the AoE. Because if there's the boner mage here... I might as well go with that. It's really just the dogs you don't want to... Ooh. Big hits? Big hits? Big hits, not quite enough for the crits. But I'll take it. Oh, they're just going for paralysis. Who cares? Paralysis means nothing to me when you're about to die. Okay, she's level 28. We might hit max level before we're done. Yeah. Said I've been playing the Final Fantasy games. Guys, I feel like I've been doing that ad nauseum. But it's like, it's very rare for me when I'm playing a JRPG to ever hit max level. Because it's usually not worth it for me. Did you get anything for refighting the knight in the desert? I don't think so. I don't think you can refight him. He probably just has bonus dialogue being like, you know, I will challenge you again someday when I am worthy. But as I am now, I am weak. He goes back to just swinging his sword for a while. Oh no, he did one damage to me. Whatever will I do? Roundhouse? Nope, can't roundhouse. Well... Nah, not enough. Ah, oh, you fought him. No, it's just not ready to refight. Huh. I didn't actually know he offered a refight. Cool. Well, delete doggo. Let's see. Multiple playthroughs like in here? Nope. I think this is a one and done game. But you didn't. You don't really re redo. Like, near Gestalt to Replicant, either. I guess except Congrats. for being able to understand what the, the Shade Beings say. Oh. Grind him for EXP, then. He would be good EXP. That is a good point. Because, yeah, there's definitely a couple of optional encounters that, yeah, probably pay out really well. Dang, wish I'd thought of that. I don't 
think it's that big of a deal, though. Cause Don't hold back. I'd say we're probably getting close to hitting level... Uh, let's see. We're probably pretty close to hitting level 29 with some of my characters. I get the distinct feeling we've got to we've got to fight the trio. There's no way that they're going to end this game without having us fight the trio. That's such a sick crit. Nah. Ah, but then again, that only actually does damage to Mar. And Mar heals just kind of automatically, so I'd not really a big deal. I was expecting this team would have more health issues, and they do not. Nier Replicant has ending E, which lets you play as a different character. True, I was thinking the most recent Nier, which doesn't. Unless I'm mistaken, and they did in, in fact include Dad. It might have. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Because yeah, personally, I was actually really hoping to play play his dad in the most recent uh, the the remake. Like the brother is good, and I think the brother fits well. But whenever I'm given the choice of the game, I tend to prefer playing the more like middle aged characters because it just they're woefully underrepresented on the market. Ow. Okay. I guess we're getting to the point where we're going to need to heal or something. When random enemies do like one damage, you probably don't need to grind a ton for levels. Well, I'm so close to max level is the point. Um, part of the reason why I'm so so keen on the idea of like getting to max in this specifically is because this is a game that I could actually hit max level on and get every single trophy on, for example. You know, normally when I play games, Getting, getting like a platinum trophy, getting 100% going full completionism, that's hours of extra content, or hundreds of hours of content, depending on the game. Um, like I, I'm sure many of you guys have heard of like the completionist. Um, and like I have nothing but major respect for that, for that man. I have to check. I knew it. I have nothing but massive amounts of respect for that man. Oh, Fist of Goliath, also known as the God Fists. But it's not for me. Automata had multiple playthroughs where he played as different characters. I feel like that's kind of mischaracterizing it though, because you weren't really doing multiple playthroughs. That was just one playthrough across multiple characters. Okay, now I gotta get some HP back, because I have been wounded. But maybe not on this fight. This and fight, we might actually want to actually fight fight. At least until we weaken them down to one. I guess, in retrospect with her, instead of doing that move, I probably could have actually just done a regular attack. Yeah, the only game I've 100%ed was Jedi Fallen Order, because I got like 90% without even trying. Yeah, it was so easy to do. I don't think we hundoed that. I think we were missing a couple. And it was like, well, we could keep going. But I found that the map nice system work. wasn't quite great. Spoiler, the hero dies, and this is him being hero round two. Little, literal anime of a roguelike character. Wait, which one are we talking about? What is this? Because, like, I would love to play a, a JRPG that, yeah, does kind of just pull that off, where it's just like, hey, by the way, you died. Game starts over. Game is different now. And you're like, what? Uh, Desert Light Knight gives you an additional 4,000 EXP and shames you a little for fighting in 1v3. Huh. Ah, uh, overly cautious hero. That one. I read the manga for that a little bit, but couldn't get into it too much. 
<laughs> Automata allows you to buy uh, the trophies, which made getting 100% so much easier. That's incredible. I love the idea of that. You know, why not? Uh, let's see. I'm going to probably do one more regular fight to heal back up. Because, yeah, stepping, stepping on those... Uh, Spikes to get the legendary weapon. Worth it, but ouch. I know there's some visual novels with that premise, but I've never seen like a an anime really pull it off, and definitely not any JRPGs. And for me, I don't wanna I don't wanna necessarily say that like my preferred My preferred Japan uh, medium of like Japanese creative works is JRPGs, but like with a JRPG, there's always kind of the redeeming factor that makes it good. Uh, so be it the combat, the lore, the story, uh, the characters or something. And admittedly, like I've played quite a lot of JRPGs that are just like absolute garbage and gross. Um, but most of the time, you know, a JRPG has some kind of, like, major redeeming Excellent. factor that makes it interesting and worth playing. Um, whereas, like, anime and stuff, very hit and miss. Manga, very hit and miss. Light novels, usually very great. miss. Some are great, but not all of them. And I usually, like, dip off after the point where it goes, like, to harem for whatever reason. Like, I really liked, uh, Death March for, I want to say, maybe the first first couple of books, and then I was just like, wow, he is just collecting young girls. Not every That's order creepy as shit. stands in your way. Something strange about this one, too. This is as far as you will get. Last game I platinum was P5 Royal. Holy shit, is, doesn't that take like forever? Or is it not actually that bad? Because I was under the impression that was one of those like ridiculously long grind ones. That is a shit ton of damage. 111 down to 66. Is that 45 damage? Yeah, 45 damage. I don't think I could do that. Especially from a streamed perspective. You know, for me, this, this 10 hour experience, 10, 12, 13 hour experience, somewhere in there. You know, that was perfect. I couldn't see myself doing another JRPG soon. At least not as like a, a fully streamed series. I mean, maybe. Maybe if it was something incredible. And maybe that's part of it. That like, I see so many things through the lens of streaming. Level 29? Next level 4? Yeah. I think we'll be hitting level 30 for him. He only gained HP for that though, which is unfortunate. I yeah, saw you were playing Final Fantasy 2 yesterday. How have you been enjoying it? Unlike that? the lower level, the lights are lit. Someone's been here. Uh, let's see. Are you going to do a JRPG video essay at some point? Yes. So, I don't entirely know what my schedule Another is. Another Ivory be. Order disciple blocks your path. Trespassers will be disposed of. So. My plan right now is to play through the entirety of the Final Fantasy series just because I've always wanted to do it. And uh, it's been generally pretty good for my mental health to do so. Uh, just do like a one-off at the beginning. Okay, floor three has the card, so this floor. Uh, do we, we just go for the poison? No, 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 no. What am I doing? 
was gonna like poison arrow, but no. We want to just go for the tri slash. Hey, Grimmooser, how you doing? This fine and lovely late, late night. I mean, it's probably late night for a lot of people. I was actually a pretty tanky lady. Um. But so my current game plan is to play through the entirety of the Final Fantasy series. Probably write little reviews on each of them, plus a couple of maybe bonus episodes. Like, I'll probably do a very quick review of Final Fantasy 1, if even. Because more so I'd rather talk about the villain of Final Fantasy 1 than actually like do just like a, a standardized syndicated review kind of thing. Um, no, let's go for Eulogy. Let's slow down a little bit. Hey, good that was lucky. Um, but I think I might take a break after Final Fantasy nice work. three or five. I gotta decide because uh, it's gonna take them a little bit uh, to make the Final Fantasy VI pixel remaster, and you know probably just a couple months or something to that extent. Um, but yeah, I think I might specifically try and play through like Dark Cloud and like Fantasy Star and a couple others. But yeah, put together a li uh, a mega list of like wish. Uh, Good work. Oh, what is it? A bucket list. A bucket list of JRPGs that I've always wanted to play that everybody says are incredible. Because I think that would be very worth my time. Ooh. Mars max level. But yeah, I I I think maybe after Final Fantasy three or something, I I will sit down and. Uh, oh no, that's that's not a, that's not should be there we go I've got a new boom arm but I haven't installed it yet because I was busy today today was like the last nice day of fall and so I wanted to go out and see this another ivory impasse how many of them are there in here Lots on the of orders enemies. of master Sherwin so wait there is actually com confirmation that they're they are doing a Dragon Quest Pixel Remaster? Are they using the, uh, the, like, Dragon, uh, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster style? Because I did not like the, uh, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, uh, remake remasters that they made recently. Those looked like ass, and I hated, I hated looking at them, so I, I, I'm super iffy on, on playing those, if I can avoid it. And, like, I'll play them fine, but if they actually do, like, a Final Fantasy style Pixel, pixel Remaster, I will be the happiest camper. Uh, and we'll probably play through the Dragon Quest games. Now? But no, I, I need to sit down at some point and kind of come up with a game plan for this and really just, like, make a giant bucket list of games that I, I specifically want to, uh... Want to play through. I don't think I'm going to be doing series on them in the way that, like, I traditionally do. Uh, namely just because, you know, this game is perfect for me. It's 12, 13 hours, like, I can, I can play through that in an, a in, not an afternoon, I mean, one very long afternoon if I really hated myself. But, like, this is distributed across three streams, and it was really comfy. Felt like that knight wanted to stop you from going any further. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Just looked it up. I'm gonna just... I'm gonna Google this. Oh. Oh, I saw this. So this actually looks to be made in more the Octopath style, because I originally thought the uh, the Pixel remasters were were going to be that, but no. Yeah, let's just. Wow. It looks a little weird. I hope they refine it a bit more. Exploring the world. Yeah, I remember seeing the screenshots of him walking around town. That actually looks really nice. Uh, hopefully they do the other ones too. Okay. Wizardry... Oh, this game. I remember that. I think that's much more of like a traditional dungeon crawler. The one problem with traditional dungeon crawlers is they tend to be a little long. 
I know there was uh, Square Enix put out a game recently called uh, Dungeon Encounters, I think it was. And I tried playing that for like maybe 10 minutes and then just got really bored because I just could not see any depth there. It almost seemed like it would have been better as an idler game than anything else. I think we might actually want to start running from regular regular encounters. Excellent. As soon as these guys hit 30, then for sure. Like, I like the idea... Ooh. Camera just zoomed in. Ow. Okay. Let's save for a big heal. Game, game four gems. Never mind, don't ha don't need to save for shit. Uh, uh, did we just go for the Eulid? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Let's see if I can actually hit it with a crystal arrow. Freeze him. Do JRPGs still have a lot of fret fetch quests? Really depends on J the JRPG, to be honest. Nice work. Yep, he resists. It's okay. Because there are some JRPGs that fully exist off of fetch quests, and many others that don't. I would say this game is kind of just a, a litany of fetch quests. But fetch quests that made sense. But there weren't none of them were like the side fetch quests where it's just like, go kill ten Gooba dabs. Cause that that interests nobody. Hey, ooh, that's a good level 30. Uh, that's a good level 30. All right. Is that... I think that's my full party is now level 30. Or at least the party members that I'm going to be using here. Now this looks a little bit more conclusively... This looks a little bit more conclusively... Like, stairway down. Okay. Chest has. Divine Beast, Old Fangs. Perfect. Alright. So we still don't have armor for Mar, but we do have big claws that really crank up Mar's damage. Damn. Oh, and this area is well lit, so I can actually. I can warp travel. Perfect. Is this going to be the last page? Might be. Nope. 3,000 gold. Or are we not... Maybe we're not on the third floor. Maybe this is just the second floor. Let's go down one more, because I, I do not see anything else here that I could even find. Mausoleum level 3. Okay, there we go. How many levels of the mausoleum even are there? Four? Five? The sign reads... There is more here than meets the eye. Fifty. No. <laughs> Har. I... There have been a handful of JRPGs that I have played where the final not level the is enemy. like... Maybe not quite that large. Honestly, I might actually want to just fight things. Shoot. You know, grand scheme of things, whatever. Let's just delete this. Dungeons, this dungeon's half the game. I Like I said, been playing Final Fantasy 3. The final dungeon is easily like 20 to 25% of my playthrough. Give or take. Damn, Mar. Excellent. That wasn't even a special move. That was just Mar to hit. I wonder if the stat gains are randomized in any way. Or if you end up with the same stats no matter what. Hopefully it's the latter. I never liked randomized stats. I remember Fire Emblem having like... Tearing my hair out because I was like... 
Why not check the wall around here? Oh, just this one. Would you look at that? A secret passage. This must be what that sign was talking about. Okay. What was it gonna say? Infinite dungeons, mar, random stats. There we go. Uh. Ooh. Hi. Okay. Hit this sucker. The dude with the hammer is clearly the one that I need to kill. However, that's gonna be tough. Fire emblem was forgivable because max stats were not random. Uh. It's like a bad level. Uh, bad levels, or, wait, max stats were not random, it's not like a bad level is a permanent setback. Depends on the Fire Emblem you're playing. Because, specifically, uh, the first Fire Emblem on the Game Boy Advance, uh, you couldn't, like, re-roll your characters or, like, uh, change their class to reset their level, uh, which is what you could do in pretty much every other Fire Emblem game. And so the... <laughs> Okay, good. The big issue specifically with uh, with how it works in, in that one is that unless you were extremely lucky or grinded like a crazy person um, in the Colosseums, which you had to do in the middle of a story map, it's not like you could do it on the ma main menu and it's not like you could save scum unless you were using specifically an emulator with save states. Um, so I remember very specifically one of my main characters ended up with like way more magic stats than he ought to have purely by dumb luck. And so while his maximum stats might have allowed for him to be a better character, um, I never got the, never got the chance because the game just didn't work that way. And it sucks. I was so sad because I effectively had to suffer through with just like some really bad stat distribution on certain characters. Unless of course I had somehow done something terribly wrong and had no idea. First time I ever played that game, I used the, like, fully upgraded heroes instead, like a fool. I should not have done that. I just remember being like, oh man, this guy is like a paladin, he's so badass, I'm just gonna use him because he takes no damage. And then you get past a certain point in the game and it's just like, oh, he's just terrible. Because he hit max level, and then, you know, his his overall stats were just bad. Is what it is. He never beat Shadow Dragon because he kept grinding Colosseums and dying. Yep. Bad case of first game syndrome. Oh, absolutely. But at that point, like, you're so stuck into it that you either have to suffer through and just hope for the best or gosh i i did so many cheesy things that were actually just terrible plans um i was so proud of myself too there may be something on the wall nearby yeah go figure another secret passage this is definitely what that sign was hinting at be sure to keep an eye out in case there are more I very specifically remember, uh, enemy appears. I think I'm just gonna fight them. Not because it's great, but because running is somewhat dangerous. Uh, just hit that one. What is it gonna say? I, I came up with a bunch of like really cheatsy strategies for Fire Emblem, and I was so proud of myself thinking like, yeah, you know, this makes everything so much easier, but what I was doing is really just shooting myself extremely hard in the foot. Uh, I probably should have actually shot Big Hammer Man. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so one of one of the strategies that I had developed was, I didn't really use the healers that much because I used all of the, uh... I had used all of the, like, pre-upgraded characters, so I didn't need them until I really needed them at that point. They were like way too low of a level and I was kind of screwed. Or a couple of them had just straight up died, uh, which was a mistake in and of itself. But uh, the other one was I would block entrances, you know, staircases where enemy and reinforcements would come in, also known as EXP pinatas. 
And so, like, my characters were just, like, terribly underleveled by the time I got to the, the end of that specific one. found line. another secret passage. They sure make it easy to get lost in this place. I'm trying to make you max level. Gosh, I am... I mean, the characters that I care about using are max level. Mysterious page? Or Dreamwoven armor. Breastplate bestowed by the God of Thunder. And that looks like it's for Mar. Which is a bit of a shame, because it would have actually been really swank to put it on her. But, you know what? Thunder! Leveling, leveling healers is probably my least favorite thing to do in Fire Emblem. If you start doing it early, and you're just healing like small amounts of chip damage, it's a little expensive. But, uh, you can get them really high level. Pretty quickly. Did you power level in Final Fantasy 1? I, I remember maxing everyone out and raffle stomping the final dungeon. Nah, I didn't need to. I think I ended that, like, in the vague 50s. Uh, to my knowledge. Let's go for the heal here. This group's easy enough. Uh, I, I believe I ended my playthrough in the, in the vague 50s. And absolutely just... Raffle stomped. Was it? Was 50 the max? I'd, I'd have to check my footage. I think you could go past in the pixel remasters. Um, but I like just stomped everything in Final Fantasy 1 up until the absolute last fight against Garland. At which point he ruined me. I didn't lose, but I have not been that stressed out about a video game in quite some time. I was really thrown thrown off by that. Because, like, he would just insta-gib any one of my party members that he would just look at. Um, and I, I'm sure many of you guys know this about me, but I am I have a serious issue with elixir syndrome that, you know, for me, uh, if there's something like an elixir that I can't just get more of, I will just not use it. Uh, unless I absolutely necessarily have to use it for whatever reason. And, uh, and so very specifically, I was running out of elixirs. I was burning through them. You got to save it A just in case. Of the ivory order stands in your way. And this the order shall bring peace to the realm, he declares as he advances on you. This is one of two games where I've actually felt a need to use elixirs. To be able to win. And fight. Admittedly, uh, that was without grinding. Like, I pretty much grinded a bunch in the beginning just so I could kind of smooth things out because the Earth Cavern was a pain in the ass. Uh, but then after that, it was caked down, especially once you got the staves. Because uh, in Final Fantasy 1, you can get these staves that uh, let you cast... It's like Thundara and Cura. Or maybe it's just Cure. But you can effectively cast, like, a big heal move for free over and over and over again. And a big, uh, AOE, like, elemental nuke over and over and over again. Uh, and it worked really well. Probably should have actually just loosed an arrow instead. That's fine. I'm just gonna try and keep people, uh, people somewhat topped off. But, what was I gonna say? But as soon as I got those two staves, I pretty much stopped casting magic with my black mage and stopped healing with my white mage because I just would use those items over and over and over again. And that's all I needed to do. Now we just have an attack down. Actually, in that case, let's do a eulogy. Because attack down doesn't affect that. Admittedly, he has to just do a slash, but I think he does enough damage to kill this dude. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Ah, uh, let's see. But yeah, so I could just breeze through using those. Even against, like, the bosses that were supposed to be hard for the most part. And then you get to Peace Garland. must bring. The Ivory Order Disciple mumbles as he totters away. 
Uh, but then you get to Garland, who very specifically, I remember, uh, I remember reading like a guide and looking at how much HP he was supposed to have. And the game said something to the extent of like, oh, balls, there's a secret on one of these walls. Yet go. another secret passage. How many of these things are there? But, like, the guide I was reading said Garland only had, like, a couple thousand HP, if even. I want to say he had tens of thousands in the Pixel Remaster. Figures there'd be a secret passage here, too. Go on and see where it leads. <laughs> like, I don't think they changed anything about that game, for the most part. Except for maybe squashing some bugs and obviously the graphics. Except for giving the final boss way more HP than he was supposed to have. Because I was hitting him for a lot and he was not going down. And he could heal himself and like a bunch of other things and I was just like... Just stressed and tired. Because <laughs> I wanted to go to bed. Now, I could go for the Tri-Blade. No, I don't think we need to do the Tri-Blade. The voice acting in this game is smooth. Does it come in different languages? I think it comes in Japanese, but that's it. Because effectively, they just have one singular na narrator, and that's it. Oh, we missed. It's fine. Hitting big hammer bonkers is perfectly fine. Goodbye. That's enough damage. I think I always misread the damage because there's one that shows up behind another, and so I don't actually see it, so it looks like it does less. Okay. Treasure chest found. Hey, there's mystery card number 10. All right. I think except for finding the last staff in the game... That's it. I think we found everything of note. There's like a monster or two that I've missed as well. Yet another secret passage. I've lost count of how many you've found, but hopefully this is the last of them. I hope so too. I mean, there's not much left to this level. Okay, only Japanese and English have voice acting. It makes sense, honestly. I know if I ever make a game, I might con I might consider this as well. You know, just the have um have just like a singular narrator instead of like full voice acting. It'd probably just be shell. get it so Mar did like heal the percentage of the damage that Mar deals to enemies because that would be a big heal oh, you know what this gives me the opportunity to get get some heals in uh oh I can't do a eulogy shoot you know what? we're just gonna kill this thing we got the heal on the next or we use one of our many curative items that we great. just have as I have a great many. Hey, that's good stuff. Soothe Stone would be good too, but this is fine. Elixir, Elixir Syndrome strikes again. I mean, the thing is, like, if I don't need to use a healing item, why would I? You know, save it for when I absolutely need it, as opposed to save uh, using it when a regular healing spell would work just as well. Obviously, it doesn't always work out that that way. But it often does. 
Because in this case, we're probably going to get down to one of these enemies remaining. Then I just say, all right, good spot to heal. I, I will admit, uh, I am actually going into a number of these JRPGs specifically with the mentality of not uh, succumbing fully to Elixir Syndrome. It hasn't been the easiest. But it is kind of satisfying being like, no, this is actually exactly you the moment. an oh. extraordinary presence ahead. You'd best not proceed unprepared. Okay. We have a secret passage. They put a secret passage here? Whoever built this place was seriously twisted. This has got to be the staff, right? Successor of the staff. Dark lore. Me. Okay. So I want to look. Because the one person that I consider swapping in... Ah, uh, there's like two people. Because we could go for her to charge. Ooh. What do we think? Keep Mar or swap in Melanie and have her just be a gem gem charger so I can specifically spit out big hits from the other two. I don't know. I think I think it's actually tempting. I love Mar. I think Mar did great, but I think we need uh, a little bit more tactical setup for this. And she's also good for elements and some other things. We just have to actually give her the equipment necessary. Because uh, switch the Sage's staff for Dark Lore. And she comes with her own legendary gear, so there's no bonk. Not the best defense, but I think she'll be fine. And she's pr damn fast, too. So I could do the water stay, poison stay. Poison isn't a big deal. I'm actually, I'm gonna do numb stay. The extra speed I think makes her just marginally faster. Marginally faster, so she starts. And if we go into her skills, we're gonna swap out Thunderstorm because she's just not gonna use it for charge charge spell. Cause this way she can just generate effectively three gems on her turn. Um I might swap out a couple of these things. I'm gonna grab zero elements. Not that I care too much for it, but if there's some big AoEs that I need to throw down, that's not a bad one. Okay, and then back to her. Poison Arrow is good. Loose Arrow is okay. I think I'm going to get rid of Crystal Arrow. I don't think we're going to use it. We're going to grab Deadly Mirage. Okay. And we are almost full health. I might as well use a quality self. Seems so wasteful to heal 5 HP with a 20, but it's fine. Is this final boss prep time? I'm pretty sure it is. It says powerful presence ahead. That almost guarantees this is the end. 